the remainder of chapter nine involves a much closer look at covalent bonding. We'll visualize what an actual covalent bond looks like. In this short section, we'll see how a mixture of attractive and repulsive forces bring two atoms together in a covalent bond, but prevent the atoms from getting too close to each other. We saw in chapter eight that covalent bonds hold two atoms together at a certain distance from each other. The electrons are attracted to the positively charged nuclei, bringing the two atoms close in like two lovers. But the nuclei repel each other, preventing the atoms from getting too close, as though our lovers have bad breath. It's common to represent this relationship with an energy diagram, like the one shown here. On the far right of the diagram, the atoms are far apart and the attractive forces pull them together. As the atoms get closer, their orbitals overlap favorably, decreasing the potential energy. This orbital overlap is what we refer to as sharing electrons. But if the atoms get too close, their positively charged nuclei will repel each other. This can be seen in the graph by the very steep line on the far left. The point of the lowest energy is the point where the attractive forces and repulsive forces exactly cancel out. We call this the covalent bond length. Usually, both atoms contribute one electron to a covalent bond. Then, when the bond forms, there are two paired electrons that make the bond, such as in the hydrogen-hydrogen bond shown here. Overlap of any two orbitals can create a bond, as we see for hydrogen and fluorine below. For the rest of this chapter, we'll see that it's actually a mix or hybridization of orbitals which creates a covalent bond. But for now, just understand that a bond forms when two orbitals overlap and have room for an extra electron. We call this idea of bonding valence bond theory. In general, the more overlap between the two orbitals, the stronger the covalent bond will be. Next lesson will be a really wild ride to learn about hybridization.